Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 61. Now this episode is Stephen Ellis, and you'll know Steve as uh, one of the hosts of Black Series Rebels, which is a fantastic YouTube show and podcast. Uh, Steve and his uh, co-host Alex are just incredible. They're doing great work out there. And uh, in this episode, we talk about how he has actually been working in the entertainment industry for a really long time. And we cover him moving from where he's from to uh, Los Angeles just to chase the dream. And then how he worked his way up from being a PA or a production assistant all the way to being a like working commercial actor. We talk about how he met Alex, um, all kinds of stuff. It's an amazing story. Um, and I think you guys are really going to like it. We even talk about how he went from being a commercial actor to being a producer. He produces television now, which is just amazing. As somebody who's fascinated by the entertainment industry, this was a great talk with a great dude. Steve is so much fun. Uh, so you know what? Without further ado, we're just going to get into this. Uh, here is the interesting podcast, episode number 61 with Stephen Ellis. Theme song time. <laughs> How's your day going? Oh, it's all right. It's all right. A little hungover, but it's okay. Hey, there you go. That's the way to do it. No, it's not the way to do it when you're 36. <laughs> not the way to do it when you're a supposed adult. Adult. What is yes. this word? Exactly. I'm still trying to figure it out. I don't think I ever will. <laughs> I think it's just a setting, isn't it? Like I got it. That would be great. You know what would be really great is if I could go back and like clear my history <laughs> of it all. <laughs> if only. If only. If only. How are you doing? You good? Yeah, not bad at all. Not bad at all. Now that now that we have a line of nice. communication, you know. There you go. It's, it's always, you'd think after almost 60 episodes, like, I'd have this down already, but there's always more to learn, I've, I've figured out. It's always going to change. Yeah. <laughs> we had, um, I, I had a woman on, actually the most recent episode, uh, named Charlotte Louise. She's a creature performer. Mm-hmm. And she's amazing, but the first oh, it's the one... it's the it's the woman from uh, Solo. Yes, yes, she's yeah, Solo. Yeah. She's in Last Jedi. She's been in a bunch of stuff. And uh, we we were supposed to get started, and then for some reason uh, she could hear me, but I couldn't hear her. So it was like forty minutes of troubleshooting, and then we found out that she just needed to uh, update her Skype. <laughs> just <laughs> for some reason, it didn't work. So it was like the perfect uh, intro. Because you know the first like few minutes talking to someone you don't know can get a little weird, but yes. but by then we'd been talking for like forty minutes one way, so when I first heard, it, I was like, "We did it!" <laughs> y'all it y'all were nice and warmed up. Exactly, exactly. It was good. It was a good time. Very like, cool. I'm learning so much about Skype, and it's like horrible, but also like not <laughs> at times. Yeah. No. I've. Um... I want this might be the first time I've used Skype for the podcasts. Normally they have me do the the Google Hangout video thing. Really? Yeah, yeah. Not bad, not bad. Either way, it does either way it doesn't matter to me. It's all the same. Sweet, thank God. All I've been the same. So Googling every iteration of Google Hangout recordings for the last hour. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, How do you um, even do this? <laughs> So I know you mentioned that you have audio on your side that can do my, pick up mine as well. Correct. Do you want me to record mine as a backup for you? Uh, yeah, can't hurt. Cool. That, cool. That... Yeah, I'll do that and then I'll I'll send it to you. Sweet. That happened. I'll Dropbox it. I had um I had another program I used to use. I think it was called it was called Call Note, and um when I had Daniel Barry on, uh for some reason Call Note's like mm, I don't feel like working, and thank God he did what you're talking about. He recorded his side. So we had a recording and it went for forever. So Daniel's awesome. There you go. But there yeah, you go. Yeah. It's a nice little, nice little Wednesday, I think, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So where are you out of again? I'm in Florida. Okay. Yeah. I'm what in part? Uh, Naples. It's okay. uh, if you go to Miami and then mm-hmm. go directly across to the other coast. Gotcha. Yeah. Southwest Florida. 
the easiest way. It's, just, cool. it's it's literally 100 miles from Miami. They're on that coast. We're on this coast, like on the same latitude, longitude, whichever the the horizontal one is. I'm not gonna lie. I was <laughs> terrible at geography. Same, same, same. Absolutely but you're out of terrible. You're out of LA. Yeah, I'm in Burbank, beautiful oh, nice. downtown Burbank, California, hey. as Johnny Carson would once say. And now I've just aged myself completely. <laughs> um, Let's try that right off the gate. Right off the gate. Where are you from? Yes. You're, are you from there? No, actually, I'm from the I'm I'm from Silicon Valley. I used to say I'm from the nice. Bay Area, but then. <laughs> People that are in like the actual like gridded lines of the Bay Area would say, "No, you're South Bay. You're South Bay." So uh, I am from the South Bay area, I guess you could say. Uh, I grew up in San Jose, California. Oh, right. Um, on. And I, I've lived in LA for oh god, almost fifteen years. Really? Yeah. Man, what was Which it like growing weird. up in San Jose? You know, man, it was it was. I grew up in cul-de-sac suburbia um nice the tech industry and all of that was always kind of around but it wasn't like you have to remember this was pre-internet as well uh, right. so i was i was i was there when there was no internet and then i was there when there we got the introduction of it in schools and things like that and got to sort of in a sense be beta testers as children um sure and so it's kind of a weird uh now looking back on it, having known a world without it and, and a world with it, but San Jose and, and Silicon Valley at the time, it was microprocessors and um, that kind of stuff. And but it was never really sort of uh, like a big deal. It didn't feel like growing up there. Sure. Um, but I guess it's the same thing for people that live in Los Angeles and don't think of the film industry or television or anything as that big of a deal. That's true. But if you're around it all the time, it's kind of. Eh, you know, it's just the way things are. It's just, yeah, it's just there. Yeah, yeah. I feel so. like I'm like the youngest generation that was like on the cusp of the change because I remember the internet being on like, you know, AOL discs that are like Netscape. Oh, yeah. But then... Oh, dude, I have a boss. <laughs> I have a boss that's still, up until like two years ago, was still paying for AOL. What? And still has And still does the whole sign in with the three-step window and the... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh man, if oh, somebody yeah. answered the phone while you were on it, it'd kick you off. You're like, "What is happening?" Oh my god. Oh yeah, that was the worst. I remember we we used to get a bunch of those discs from like the post office or whatever. And when oh. we found out that you no longer had to pay for those, uh, my brother and I used them as like ninja stars. And there was oh, yeah. there was no joke, probably a hundred CDs around our neighborhood that we just threw oh, at each other. <laughs> that's amazing. How old are you? I'm 20, I'll be 27 in like a week. Okay. Yeah, okay. I was born in 91. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'll be 36 in like three or four weeks. Nice. July? So, yeah, cancer. Nice. Same. That's very, the very, most fun. very emotional. I'm yeah. a very emotional person. <laughs> I cry. I can cry for no reason at all. Same. It just happens. Same. So, it's yeah. A, it's a fun existence. It's being, true. Being a, you know, a sign that's also a disease. But um, it's true. <laughs> so you're what the second week? I'm July second. I'm July fifteenth. Nice. Uh, my mom, my brother, and I are all July. That's so funny. My dad's birthday is so we just have Father's Day. Yeah. My dad's birthday is in two days. Nice. My well, no, it's weird. My sister-in-law's birthday, then Father's Day, then my dad, then my birthday, then my mom's birthday, and then. We end at the first week of August on my brother. Nice. But then my then then it goes my wife's birthday, a week following my wedding anniversary. <laughs> like it's just oh, like dude. between that. between between June and like and middle of, well then you got Halloween and then you got Thanksgiving and Christmas and it's just this like never ending <laughs> thing. <laughs> I hear you. I my my well I I just got married like two weeks ago. And, uh, Congrats! Thank you, thank you. My, I'm, I'm still getting used to using the term wife, but my now wife, her birthday is November, and then you've got Christmas, and then our anniversary mm -hmm. is January, and then Valentine's Day is February. So from like <laughs> November to February, it's like I'm just not gonna have money 
because yes. Well, not only that, it's the whole thing of like. So I we celebrated. We're about to celebrate six years of marriage in October, nice. and it's one of those things where now it's like, what the hell do I write? Like it's only been I mean, yeah. six years. That's awesome, <laughs> but like, what the hell do I write in in a card now, dude? I'm with you. Like there. I'm, I'm like I'm like going back and pl- replaying the hits right now. I know. Yeah, <laughs> we uh, when my wife and I we've been together uh, eight years in January. Yeah. And uh, at, for our vows, we're like, let's just skip this part. Like, we everything we would say, we've already said. Like, we know how we feel. <laughs> like, let's yeah. speed this process up. I, same, same. Like, let's just get a funny card. That'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's such a dangerous game because you're like, I'm going to go with funny. But we've oh, been yeah. together for so long. And then she's like, really? Another chicken card? All oh, right. And- <laughs> And the thing that kills me is, is my wife is like, my wife takes up all the free space on a card. Like, I bet <laughs> if, it didn't, if it didn't look weird, she'd also write on the back of the card if she could. And it's like these really beautiful, elegant, touching things. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, why? Like, like you just put, you just start. I, I gotta go. I, I, I just gotta go start googling on the internet and then just like doing Mad Libs. That's where right. I plug in, <laughs> like you know, it, I just yeah. That's it's right. craziness. She pulls out this scroll, and you just kind of put yours back in your pocket. <laughs> it's true. It's true. But the trick that I have learned is um, never send flowers on because you've done something wrong. Yeah, good good tip. And never, 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 never. Always send flowers like the anniversary of your first date. Not Ooh, like – just like nice. really – Really, really random things like that or like flowers on like the anniversary of your first kiss or things like that. And I have found that keeping all old emails is a very nice way to be like, okay, this happened at this point. This was when and you can find the exact date and random flowers, random flowers sent to the office or work, not on anniversaries, not on Valentine's Day, just totally random is – it's my rebuttal to the beautiful cards. That's right. <laughs> Pro tip. I'm into it. <laughs> I, I always remember uh, I watched Castle when it was on. I was a bit, I'm a big Nathan Fillion my, fan. My my mom's favorite show. Me and your mom would be friends. Patty. <laughs> Patty's favorite show. Hey, Patty. I know Patty through <laughs> your show. <laughs> uh, we I remember there was this uh, episode where they were talking about uh, buying gifts and whatnot for your significant other. And the captain, he was like, how do you keep it fresh after like 30-something years of marriage? And he says, the key is get her something that she asked for when she thought you weren't listening. And I was like, true. ooh. So anytime my wife's like, oh, this is kind of nice. I'm like, you're right. It is kind of nice, isn't it? See you in six yeah. months, my friend. Yeah, you know? take a photo. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You, know, you learn. I'm with you. I'm with you. But in the last couple of years, my wife is – our wedding is literally – her birthday is the 30th of September. Our wedding anniversary is the 5th of October. Oh, boy. Um, so now it's turned into a thing of, okay, we go on like a two-week vacation, like Smart. starting on her birthday and then after our anniversary every year. So, Gotcha. Do you still celebrate the, the day you got together and the marriage or do you now just default to Well, the for instance – for instance, uh, last Wednesday, a week ago today, would be our 10-year anniversary since, like, our first kiss. Nice. And technically, like, our kind of date thing. Uh, mm-hmm. But we had been friends long before. Um, and, and I had, a, like, flowers sent, roses sent to the to work. And she was, even when they, they arrived, she's like, what the fuck is this for? <laughs> like, what is... What is going on? I, I, I won't cuss. I won't cuss on the podcast. Um, you can. Let's get the explicit tag anyway. <laughs> it uh, okay. Um, and yeah, that was that was our ten year um, anniversary thing. And I'm sorry. What was the question again? Uh, I sort of ran. <laughs> do you still celebrate the day you got yes. together and the marriage? So, or both? so I guess technically yes. Uh, and then we ended up. We were supposed to make a nice healthy dinner, and instead we went and had a stupidly expensive sushi dinner that night um there you go so i guess yeah we do nice like, yeah, yeah it wasn't like a an, an arranged like okay this is the anniversary of our thing we're doing x y and z but um yeah it, it's it's small little things like that you know sure um, whatever keeps it alive that and we're we really like doing like halloween and 
Christmas decorations and nice things like that. So that's awesome. That's awesome. We do the same thing in that, like, uh, yes. once a year we go through just a ridiculously expensive dinner for no reason. Like, why is a steak fifty five dollars? But all right, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, man. Any anything you can do to just sort of, I guess, celebrate each other and take the time. That's right. Um, That's right. Things you learn. Things you learn along the way. But it's so cliche and cheesy. It's like you know, I've probably been on my phone way too much this week. I need to like put it away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you have Let's a little actually time. have a conversation. Yeah, exactly. You know, you know. But you, so you work in TV production. I do. I don't know if I you produce, can tell. I watch your show. So, I, I produce true crime television. Uh, I produce. Um, I produce stuff for Bravo and Andy Cohen to the National Geographic Channel. To, um, I, I work primarily in sort of docu. Nice. Um, or I, I hate the term docu series. Like it's so lame <laughs> to me. I basically make like hour long mini documentaries on whether it's John Gotti or it's now and then and now or now and then and it's the year nineteen ninety and we're comparing the premiere of whatever T V show to today and you know, things like that or um I'm currently working on a I started on Monday of the second season of a of a true crime show starring uh, a rapper named uh, Ice T. <laughs> oh, I may have heard of him. <laughs> maybe that's maybe, awesome. but uh, yeah, yeah. So it's it's fun, and at the same time, like sometimes it's subject matter that I don't watch. I don't care as long as I get to, of course, you know, I'm I'm, I'm making silly television, and maybe I'm scaring people, or hopefully I'm letting them turn their brains off for an hour or 20 minutes here and there for sure from their their day the day to day how'd you get into that um are we recording maybe <laughs> <laughs> all right well i haven't i haven't been recording my audio yet you're fine um i uh i was a ham i i was the youngest of three people my uh my <laughs> My parents got married in 1967. They had my older brother Mark in 69, had my sister in 71, 72, and then 71. And then my dad immediately had a vasectomy. Oh, man. I swear to God, this gets to why I'm in L.A. and do what I do. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> this is different. My dad, my dad had a vasectomy, and about <laughs> 10 years later, in July of 1982, I was born. And when my mom had found out that she was pregnant with me, Oh no. She 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 wasn't very happy. You have to remember at this point they had children that were on the cusp of like just got to get through high school and they're off to college right. and <laughs> it's just the two of us they see, and we're they 37 smell freedom. <laughs> and we're 37 years old and we're that's that and uh well, my mom was was less than thrilled. Um fair, and fair. my dad was like, "Well, it ain't mine." Like <laughs> That's not possible. Well, it turns out I am indeed my father's son, and um, I I like to say that uh, I used to do stand up, and I used to kind of talk, tell this story and tell jokes about it. And I used to like to say that the reason I am so incredibly lazy right now <laughs> in this in this world is because I am the Michael Phelps of sperm. I swam my ass off just to get into this world that's right that this is retirement babe yeah you peaked early <laughs> yeah yeah this is retirement i am i'm playing with the house's money that's right. um <laughs> anyhow i because i was the youngest and i had these older siblings and stuff um i was introduced to all kinds of music and movies and tv and stuff from a very very young age and i was very obsessed on top of that i was a ham um, just a big ham, and I started doing theater in high school, and I, I was, I was a total nerd in junior high and elementary school. I was a total just, like, don't notice me, don't notice me. But at home, I was a big ham, and with my my close buddies, I was a ham. And then I went to high school, um, in a different school district than I had been in K through twelve through 
eighth grade basically. Oh man! And so I sort of got to restart, and I I noticed that I I was really good at reading out loud. The te- English teacher would always have me read out loud, and uh, she also happened to be the drama teacher and asked me to audition for a play. And I I played a I got cast in a play playing this insane psycho. Um, person in one floor of the cuckoo's nest and the crowd nice. went nuts and at that point chris farley had just really hit oh perfect and and i was a big guy and so i was really just a big ham overacting making crazy big facial expressions and being silly on stage and and i got laughs and applause and from that moment on it was like i had just done heroin for the first time oh yeah and so I was obsessed. I was like, this is it. And I just did every play musical from there on. I graduated high school and in 2000. And my um, all my friends went on like senior trips to Cancun or, or whatever. And I was making pizza at a pizza parlor all summer. Or <laughs> nice. from graduating until like July. And I was, my 18th birthday was coming up. And my my best friend, I didn't I, believe it or not. This is really sad. I didn't have my license until I was <laughs> eight, eight, until I was eighteen years old. Sometimes um, you don't need it. Super lame, and just I had really awesome friends that drove everywhere. There you go. Um, anyways, my one buddy had a car, and he wasn't doing anything for the summer. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna stay in a youth hostel in Santa Monica, and I'm gonna ride my skateboard in Venice. And nice. I'm gonna just go do that. You want to come with me, Chris? And he was like, yeah. So we like. Stopped at Tower Records and bought all the new albums that came out that week and drove down in his convertible and we stayed at the youth hostel in Santa Monica on the Third Street Promenade. And uh, one night we had been one walking in the promenade and this guy came up to us and was like, hey man, you want to see a movie? You want to see a movie? Pre-screening, not even final edit. Like it's a test audience thing. Wow. I'm a huge movie. I'm a huge movie buff at this point. I don't. I'm like, whoa, test audience. Like, I was like, we're doing it. Ended up being a really terrible arty, <laughs> like, art film called The Caveman's Valentine, and it's about Sam Jackson like being a violinist in a cave in Central Park. It's it's bananas. That's amazing. Um, anyways, afterwards we're walking back to the hostel, and we walk past a cigar shop. Uh, on the promenade there, and I there, I noticed a really beautiful girl playing an acoustic guitar, and then I notice, and they're like, it's this like total like Casablanca style loungy leather, smoky cigar lounge. Sure. And I notice, um, I notice an actor in in the uh, um, in the cigar lounge as well with this girl. And I'm like, oh, my God. And I turn to my buddy Chris. I'm like, dude, I just turned 18. I've never had a cigar. We're going in here. So we go in, and, like, I I spend 15 minutes, like, looking for the cheapest cigar I could find. <laughs> Whatever gets you in there, man. <laughs> exactly. And the guy, I bought it, and the guy lit it, and we sat down, and we just started talking with this girl and this guy, and other people came. Turns out it was it's Chris Penn, Sean Penn's – Sean Penn's brother, who's no longer with us, um, and Chris Penn, you know, he was la- he was he was bigger than life, man. He was boisterous. He was he was a big guy. Anyways, my buddy and I would literally the, the cigar lounge would open at ten a.m. We were still in L.A. for another week and a half. We went to that cigar shop every morning when it opened. They we basically ended up becoming like production assistants. These guys would send us to go get them bagels, pizza, ice cream, coffee, whatever, and we would just run back and forth all day long. Now, I'm not proud of this. I smoked <laughs> cigarettes cigarettes uh, back then. Okay. And so we would just, like, hang out all day doing errands and talking to these guys, and they would play really cool, like, vinyl records of new, like, underground hip-hop and things. And my, we, it just was this crazy thing with these two punk kids – that mm-hmm. don't look like they belong, and you've got high rollers coming in there, you've got actors, actresses, models, CEOs, agents, and you just sit there and you start to soak up the sort of the industry that is a part of making television and film and entertainment in, entertainment in general. Oh, yeah. Um, it's like a master class. Sure. And I it got to the point where I would, like, I remember going next door to this cafe to pick up coffees and a variety. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and I'm walking in and there's, I go in and I get it. And I'm carrying like all these copies and I, I walk out of the door and who's sitting there smiling at me and winks at me, but Al Pacino. What? Like, this was like, that's it. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah like, this is See terrible. you later guys. Like, you college, did it. <laughs> like, college was never, this is really sad for me to admit, but college was never, um, something I thought about. I always was like, okay, I need to, okay, I, I need to accomplish. I need to get out of high school and not fail and get reasonable grades. And that's what I need to do. And then I'll figure out, I got to, then I'll get to the next step when I get there. That's right. But right now, this is, this is what I've got to do right now. Uh, I was never like a big planner or thought ahead. So (laughs) at this point, Al Pacino winks at me and we we're going back and forth to this cigar lounge every day. And finally, Chris, Chris Penn says to me, he's like, what are you? My nickname back then was Flappy. And I, <laughs> okay. He was like, Fla-, I'm, he's like, Fla-. I'm not going to explain that one, but <laughs> he was like, uh, I'll, I, I'll save that for another time. Okay. He, he's like, he's like, Flappy, you know, I, uh, what do you want to do, man? What do you, what do you do? I was like, well, I'm an actor. He's like, well, I was like, yeah, I, I did a lot of theater back home and, and this and that and I've always wanted to be on my dream has always been on the like Saturday Night Live or something and I'll never forget he was like oh yeah you want to be an actor do a, pardon my language do a fucking monologue right now oh nice on the spot on the spot Jeez. just like holy shit and I and I froze and I couldn't do it fair and 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 he was like you know what man he was like he's like that's all right he's like but now now you know what you need to do now you know, like, wow. if you really want, this, you really want to be this crap. Mind you, this dude was like drunk every day. Yeah. He, didn't, <laughs> he didn't have license. He probably did a lot of blow. Of um, course. Every taxi cab he walk out of a store, there was always a taxi cab there to take him home. He had them on like a retainer. <laughs> Uber before Uber. That's right. Um, and he just got really serious with me. And it was like, wow, all right. And then he was like, you know what I'm going to do? He's like, you guys are leaving tomorrow, right? I was like, yeah. He's like, all right. And he makes a phone call. And he's like, he hands me a piece of paper. And he's like, be here tomorrow at 10 a.m. You're going to meet a woman named, um, oh, God, Zoe. You're going to meet a girl named, you're going to meet a woman named Zoe. I was like, okay, all right. And so my buddy Chris and I, we we, we drive to this place out in Burbank from Santa Monica. Uh, which if you don't know, that's Santa Monica is out on the coast. Burbank's like deep in the valley yep. or the beginning of the valley, just where Warner Brothers is. And uh, and we go and it's this place called Central Casting, which is just a extras. Now I know it's just like an extras thing. Anyways, I go. I, I meet this woman, Zoe. She's like, all right, fill out this like whole profile of yourself. We're going to take a digital photograph of you uh, and it'll be 20 bucks. Um, and you know, basically you're going to be in our system now that whenever we need like extras or featured extras or anything like that, um, you're going to, you can come down here and and you can do this. I was like, Oh, okay. So anyways, fill it out, come home. My parents are like, you paid 20 bucks. Did what? You totally got ripped (laughs) off. It's a scam. Who are these people? What is wrong with you? And I'm now fast forward a week later and I'm, I've, I'm at the junior college bookstore getting my books for my first semester of college or of junior college. Mm -hmm. And um, I get a page from an 818 area code and I, I, it's it's a voicemail on my pager and I I call the the voicemail and it's like, Hey, we want you to come down. We want you to, we want you to be a featured extra as this role of a nerd on this show on the WB called popular. Oh, nice. And I was like, oh, okay. What, when, and it was like, you have to be on set on the Walt Disney lot tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. Now, to give you a perspective, I'm up in San Jose, which is about five and a half, six hour drive. Oh, no. <laughs> How I bad don't do you have want a it? Li- <laughs> I don't have a license. Oh, I have friends that are in college at Long Beach State that live in Huntington Beach, which is probably an hour south of L.A. Oh, God. Uh, I, all my buddies like, we're going. And all like four of us pile into a white Jetta. Nice. And we drive down to LA. We drive down to Huntington beach. I get like two hours of sleep. Of course. And I'm dropped off at the Walt Disney lot in Burbank, California. And you've made it. (laughs) 
<laughs> and I'm just like, holy crap. Like, I'm walking down the lot. I'm looking at sound stages. They've got plaques on it. It's like Lost in Space was filmed here. Like, all this stuff. And I'm like, oh, I'm just soaking this up. I'm a, And at the end of the day, these are just buildings with numbers on them, guys. That's all it is. <laughs> these are just empty square boxes with numbers on them. True. But for me, me, it's just like I – this is amazing. This is amazing. I go to where I'm at. I'm sitting in this dark sound stage with like set flats that are just, you know, the, 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 the walls of a set. Mm-hmm. And I'm with like 200 extras. We all look like high school students with our backpacks. And it's, this is, this is okay. So I'm just kind of sitting here, sitting here. And then about 45 minutes later, this really like young, but just feisty and pissy, um, man comes in with a clipboard and he's like, you know, calls a name, calls a name, my name, calls a name. And so it's like five or six of, of guys and girls together. Mm-hmm. Um, we raise our hands. He's like, great, you don't belong here. Come with me now. Oh, and boy. so it's like straight up like a walk and talk Aaron Sorkin scene in West Wing. He's in front <laughs> of us, passing these like things behind us. Everyone's just like, oh my God, oh my God. And we're just walking fast. He's talking a million miles a minute. Okay, go to wardrobe, this and that. When you're done with wardrobe, go to makeup. Go to makeup. You're going to come here, and you're going to come right back here. You're going to see me. And he's, like, smoking a cigarette really fast. And we're all like, okay, okay. And I'm just this kid that I'm 18 years old. I'm no idea what is what is happening. Sure. Um, this and, is showbiz. And every, everybody around me is just like, oh, my God. 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 We're in. We're in. <laughs> in. We're in. And finally, I go, hey, guys, like. Like we go to the wardrobe thing and they're still like freaking out. And, and I walk out of the wardrobe trailer and we're walking towards the makeup trailer and I, they're, they're still freaking out. And I finally, I go, Hey guys, what's, what's the big deal? What are, what are we in? What did we, what's going on? And they were immediately, it's like, they stop and one of them gets in my face and it's just like, who do you know? Oh God. I was like, uh, the worst. Yeah. I don't know nobody, dude. Like I, I literally just drove down here from San Francisco, practically. Like, what are you talking about? What I, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. That's and right. they were like, like, dude, you, this this thing you're holding in your hand that looks like a time card. Like this is a SAG voucher, Screen Actors Guild voucher. What? Do you know how hard these are to get? Do you know how hard these are to get? He was like, you you realize that you are booked on this show for two weeks, and you are a featured extra. You are you are now officially able to join the Screen Actors Guild in your very first job. Good God. That's insane. And it's like, wait, what? Like and it took I didn't I still didn't quite comprehend it. And so anyways, I I was down here for two weeks and they it was, it was uh, for those of you who don't know, or if you don't know, you, the show popular uh, was R- Ryan Murphy, who does like all the American Horror Story stuff. He did the People versus OJ. He did Nip Tuck. Um, he does a he he does very cheeky sort of mm-hmm. um, soapy shows, and and this was really his first one. And um, I had Ryan Murphy cracking up. I had like I was just doing that ham thing that I did on stage. Right. But like on camera, and I didn't have any lines or dialogue. It was this: I was these group, these nerds. We were a group of nerds that were a part of the storyline, and I remember that he, they wanted us to come back then for for more episodes as these like running characters for like two or three episodes. Nice. And it. it yeah, but at the same time, I'm now sleeping on the floor of, course. <laughs> of one of the other nerds' apartments. Um, I've never been away from home. I, I, all these things. It was really exciting, and then, but it was one of those things where, well, shit, I need to decide now if I do this. I've got to drop out of all the classes I've registered for, and this and that, and and sure. I'm such a like, like I was talking about being emotional earlier, like. I'm like thinking I immediately go to this place of oh my god I'm a failure I'm I've got to drop out of junior college oh my god what have I done with my life you know what I mean <laughs> so over the top We're the so same. dramatic and I often cite this as my very first adult decision and <laughs> it was you know what 
School will be there. If I want to take this craft and I want to do this, this is going to teach me more than what I'm going to get out of getting all my basic education at it, junior college for a semester. Very true. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, like math and English and public speaking can wait. This is... Yeah, on set is much better. Yeah. And so I spent the summer on the Walt Disney lot and out on locations wow. being a nerd. What I And back to the smoking cigarettes thing. I don't condone smoking cigarettes at all. <laughs> but I have to say it opened up opportunities for me in terms of I would go out and have cigarettes and I would become friends with the ADs, the, the prop guys, the camera dudes, the actresses, the other extras, the this, the that. Sure. And it, it was really like this crash course education for me. And I would – that would go on for a, quite a while where I would go up you – no, know, I would be at home doing junior college and I immediately signed up for all theater. I signed up for television production classes. I I just I immersed myself in film production as well as like being able to critically look at movies and and enjoy them that way. And in front of the camera and behind of the camera. Mm -hmm. And it was great. And I was in junior college longer than I was in high school. Um <laughs> And I never actually graduated junior college. I just I took all this stuff up while still coming back up and down from here in L.A. being an extra or 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 what have you. Sure. Um, and then in then a couple years later, I was working for a uh, I was doing data entry and stuff for a, a software company, and I was not happy, and I had like gone through an emotional breakup and uh <laughs> every catalyst <and>, actors <laughs> yeah and uh i my my best friend had graduated from long beach and uh a friend of ours had just per that he went to school with and we knew from being in san jose had was really um mature for her age and bought a house like straight out of college in um east east la a little bit Whoa. and uh um I was miserable at this job, and we would always chat on AIM all day long in these office jobs that we all had. Mm -hmm. um, and she just said to me one day, she's like, dude, she's like, quit your job, pack your car up, come come live with Ryan and I. I promise you, you will get you will get work. Just come down. And I I don't know what it was with me. I second adult decision in my life. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I packed up and I went home and I quit my job. I put my two weeks notice in and I came home and my parents, mind you, have always been super, super supportive of me doing whatever it is I wanted to do. They never pushed me into anything. They never pushed me into sports. They never put like if I found it, they were totally would like support me 100 percent. That's amazing. Um, and but there was also this this fear, you know, your kid wants to be an actor like sure. you hear it all. I, it, that's you know that's what the, what are the odds what are the chances sure. anyhow I came home and I was scared to death because my parents you know well you should at least have a backup plan kind of a thing and is what I'm thinking they're going to be and they're not going to be happy that I just made this uh, quick decision mm -hmm. and I'll never forget coming home and I was so scared to open up the door my parents are sitting in the front room my mom's reading a book um, and my dad's reading the newspaper and I walk in and my uh I don't forget. I was like, oh, hey, how's your day? Whatever. And then I was like, well, I've got some news. Um, I quit my job today and I'm moving to Los Angeles to live with Ryan and Marie in two weeks. And I'll never forget my my dad, like flicking the paper down, looking at me. And my mom puts her book down and looks at me. She closes her book and she goes. Good. It's about time. <laughs> That's awesome. And, and my mom took me to Costco and loaded my car up with bottled water and cokes and vitamin waters and mac and cheese and top ramen and like my car was just loaded and um i drove down to los angeles and i uh, to be, i'll be really honest with you brian i i didn't think i would be i didn't tell anybody this but it was like i'm probably gonna come back home in like three months like yeah. whatever <laughs> like there's, i'll just go back and that's what's gonna happen there's that emotional and, side <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I got here, and within two days, I my friends had both been get they had both out of college had signed up with this entertainment industry um, 
temp agency. And so I immediately got to LA on a Saturday. That Monday, I went that I called that temp agency and I went down there and I had to take like a writing test or a typing test, a math test, uh, ex- like how to work in Excel, uh, quick all these questionnaires, all these things, because then it would show what jobs you would best fit for. And I spent six months. I got a, I got a temp job like within a week, and I was working um, doing basically copying files in, onto a server for a music production. Oh, nice. company for for a record label for Sony and through that I met people and they would always bring me back and that was like a, a pretty good gig for a while and then I bounced around everywhere from stuffing sitting at a uh IATSE union like grip and electricians union like <laughs> in Sino with all these old timers mm-hmm. stuffing like ball- like union ballot envelopes and I again I did the same thing I did when I was going to the cigar shop, mm-hmm. talking with all those people, listening to them talk, um, smoking cigarettes on set of Popular and meeting and talking and soaking up all of the different professions there. For sure. Doing it again around this old table with like all these old timers with suspenders and <laughs> you know, stuffing ballots. And I, I bounced around and I did these temp work for like about six or eight months. And I ended up at Cartoon Network. What? For a while, which was just again smoking cigarettes or just <laughs> whatever, like talking with these artists and these animators and these things, and just soaking. And it, it, to be honest with you, that was my college, right? Oh, absolutely. That that was that was my college while also building my network. And eventually, I um, ended up at a production company as an office PA. I at this point was going out on like commercial auditions. I had like a terrible agent that was also the apartment manager of an apartment <laughs> of an apartment in like van nuys of couldn't course. have gotten more couldn't have gotten shadier <laughs> um, i had that by this point other friends of mine or or um mutual friends had moved down here doing one thing whether it was writing directing acting like all kinds of stuff and we started all of us were i got a job being an office runner office pa and um, that was kind of cool because I got to like drive around and go to all these places and run errands, sure. um, and also see how like reality television was made yeah. and clip show television was made. Um, but also all of my friends outside of work, we all, whether we were struggling actors, writers, all that stuff, we all just, we wanted to just do something. We just wanted to, to just make stuff and, you know, one of us had a digital camera and like, some lighting equipment and some sound. And, and eventually we started this thing during the um, MySpace. Um, during the MySpace days, we started this thing called Sunday School. And the way it, eventually what it turned out to be was that if you one of us wanted to write like a five page thing or whatever, mm-hmm. we would be like he would be like, I'm going to write it. So he'd go away for the week and he would write it. And then on Saturdays, it would be like, okay, we'd read it and go, okay, I'm going to, um, I'm going to, I want to direct it. I want to try directing. I want to try lighting. I want to try sound. Oh, I like that. And then we would just cat, like all, put word out to friends and we would literally do all of this on a Saturday, cast it all. And, um, by the, so we would do all that. And then by the next weekend, we would film it in one day. Wow. And. And then edit it, and it, and then we would put post these short videos on MySpace, and we did about like seven or eight of them, nice. and they were, I mean, they were, they were, they're they're terrible, but at the <laughs> same time, it was just a way for us to get our hands on and practice and make things and learn production and learn, learn what you know, learn the craft. Absolutely. And, um, while I was doing that, I was going to Second City in Los Angeles. Oh, sweet. And, um, taking improv there, and I was there for a while, and that's where I met Alex, the co-host of my show, Black Series Rebels. Yeah. Um, he was this young, like, 18-year-old kid, fresh out of high school, just, just, but he was, it was one of those things where I remember being in class, and I was like, I need to sit next to this kid. <laughs> you know, this cool-looking punk rocker kid. Um, I, I, I dig it, and, and he's hilarious, and I need to learn from this kid. And, um, yeah, so we were we were there for a while, and 
my this Sunday school thing, this the short film group people from MySpace, mm-hmm. we saw that Red Bull was doing a, a a web series competition. Now you have to remember this is literally at the very beginning of web series. Sure. Like I want to. I mean, nobody watched web series. It wasn't even a like thing. And we all went, hey, we've been doing this thing for, you know, a year now. Like, we're a well-oiled machine. Let's do something. Let's, let's really do this. And we did. And, and it was a lot of the same cast and players we had used throughout Sunday School or who we had met through doing that. Mm-hmm. And we, you know, one person's buddy was a realtor that had this empty house up in near Chatsworth, which God knows what else he probably rented it to. <laughs> uh, being, in, being Chatsworth, I'm not going to talk about it on here, but you can Google Chatsworth, and yeah. <laughs> it's big. It's the big industry there. And, yeah, um, <laughs> and, and um, we shot this thing, and it was this bizarre whodunit, Twin Peaksy, Twilight Zoney thing where each there was a huge cast of characters and all of the scenes where all the cast was in it took place in this very dark room we were all sitting in a circle and there was a guy there that was sort of like the game master Sweet. and then each episode of and then so we shot this 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 pilot we submitted it for this Red Bull thing and by golly we won yeah we won and Red Bull and IFC Independent Film Channel we're going to produce and air it on their their channel and their website and all this stuff and so we got a budget and we got to do like a bunch of episodes and each episode was a different person was from the perspective of a different person sitting in the chair and their story and then how it all intertwines and interconnects. Sure. Um, Some of them are pretty terrible. Some of them are great, but again, like let's do this. So by this point, you know, I'm, I'm in LA. I'm here. I have an apartment now. I'm not on the couch. I'm, I'm, this is what I'm going to do with my life. And it, it really hasn't stopped since. And I, I got, you know, I, I did a guitar hero commercial. Yes, you did. Uh, I'm so glad you brought five. that up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did a, um, I, so it all connects. Um, yeah. The, the weird, the really shitty agent, uh, sent me out on this audition. Uh, it was my first audition actually. <laughs> Uh, my what? first legitimate one. Yeah. And he's like, but are you comfortable like auditioning in your boxers? And I was like, whatever. <laughs> like, I get it. Whatever. Sure. Because you're going to have to dance to a song for like two minutes in your boxers and like strut. And it was like, all right. Done. So I get to the audition. I stand. I go. I stand in like a row of the back wall with like four other fat dudes. <laughs> we all take our shirts off and drop our chow. It looks like the most unusual Usual suspects yeah. <laughs> poster, um, and I ca- I look up and one of the producers behind the tables is this cool dude Mark, that was a producer from Red Bull on the short film. No way. And he looked at me and I looked at him, and I was like, we were like brothers on that set. We always were getting into mischief behind the scenes and and just we got each other and uh, I I got the role. I yeah, don't. I, it, I got the role, and I, I, it's for Guitar Hero Five, and it was a uh, based off of this French band's music video, where these really beautiful models are walking down uh, Paris, Paris streets, busy Paris streets, um, with this like this this song playing, and over their um, their <laughs> chest and their yeah, over their naughty bits are. Um, <laughs> lyrics of the song and uh this was a parody obviously of it with me strutting my strutting myself strutting my stuff down the third street promenade joined by like four or five beautiful women models Mm -hmm. i love you Um, push them out of the way when it was your turn you're like excuse me yeah (laughs) so and the and it and it was a thing for people to go viral to go what the hell is this thing and it would be the song titles that were going to be on ground Guitar Hero 5. Um, And I show up (laughs) at... Again, it's for your craft, man. That's right. (laughs) I show up at the Santa Monica and the Third Street Promenade, which, again, this all comes full circle, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I stayed at the youth hostel at the Third Street Promenade. I was running errands for all these people and stuff. I hadn't... Like, I was a kid. I was 18. 
And now here I am, fast forward, and I'm at the Third Street Promenade with this huge, huge, I mean millions of dollars production for this commercial. And it's like me, like it, it just, it all came full circle. And I, I just can remember it's 5 a.m. and I'm in the back of a trailer and this very, very nice, but very um, <laughs> tiny, tiny man <laughs> that was very happy um, handed me my banana hammock, basically. I was going to say, say Merkin. <laughs> Merkin, yeah. And it's like, put this on. And then when and come out when you're done. So I literally here I am, and I'm in a bathrobe and I put this little tiny flesh colored thing on. <laughs> now, mind art. you, I'm, I'm just to let you guys know, like I'm that weirdo that is like I have a problem in public restrooms. Fair. Like I have a I have a fear of them, and like I still for the most part will go inside a stall even if I've got to pee. Fair. Um, I'm just I I'm just yeah, and I he's like all right, take the robe off. I take the robe off. He's like, great. He gets on his knees. Oh, God. I swear to God, this is not a Harvey Weinstein moment. (laughs) Uh, That's actually, I apologize. That's not something to joke about. But, um, oh, no. Yeah, I didn't laugh. That was, yeah. (laughs) Bad, Steven. (laughs) Sorry. Sorry. (laughs) And um, he proceeds to take a Sharpie out and draw all these little black circles all over my Merkin, which is a very, very thin piece of nylon. Oh, boy. Um, for the art. And, yeah, so that was for the art. And that was the moment I just started laughing to myself. And I was like, what am I doing? But it's for the craft. <laughs> That's right. What That's would Chris, when you know you've what, made it. <laughs> what, would, what would Chris Penn do? That's right. <laughs> um, and so I did the commercial. And we did, like, a bunch of takes. And the, I, the, the first video is what I was instructed to do. Um and then on the last take, the director was like, just do whatever you want, bud. And so the last take is the, the really wild one. So there's two videos. Is the first video that's Naked Girls Interrupted um, on YouTube, and it doesn't have any sort of Guitar Hero labeling or anything on it. Right. It's just you don't, don't know what it is. Then came the director's cut a few weeks later, which was the big sort of announcement, and it was this, um, this final take that I did. And it's me just like, get the girls out of here. This is all of me, and I own it, and I'm fierce, <laughs> and I should be on, I should be walking the runway on RuPaul's Drag Race. Like, I, I, I owned it, and I went crazy, and that ended up being the final video they used for it. Um, and that was me just like, all right, like, I've, I, uh, good things are happening. Right. And uh, this is where I'm meant to be. And so I kicked it around town, and I, I did commercial work, and I did, um, auditions and I did Second City and I, I did a bunch of stuff. I did voiceover stuff. I, you know, all kinds of things while also simultaneously being this office PA runner. At this point, I'm 30 years old. I've just been 31. I've just gotten married mm-hmm. and I'm tired of being the, like, going out for auditions, being the fat dude, having to take his shirt off. Fair. Um, I'm tired of being the guy that is I, I I'm bored with my own brand of humor. I'm bored with my own um my 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 shtick. Uh-huh. The shtick I've been doing since I got casted in that um high school play. And I I wasn't happy. I wasn't happy doing errands and getting coffee and putting quarters in a guy's car for the val- for when he's got to park at a meter and constant you know, having to go and pick up, you know, a Armani shopping bags from the Armani store on Rodeo Drive to then just fill them with like finesse shampoo bottles and like <laughs> don't get me wrong I was treated very well there they let me go and uh, audition and, and do stuff when I was there but as a 30 year old dude I just wasn't I wasn't happy I wasn't happy with my my the with acting I wasn't happy with improv I wasn't happy with my job sure and my wife wife said you know dude you're really creative you're really this like. I think you should go like I think you should quit and I think you should go be on set and and just get go start being a an on set PA and you'll trust me just just go and uh, luckily I had a girlfriend who uh, was a production manager on a show and she knew that I was considering this mm-hmm. and she was like hey you want to come do this it'll take you from November to May or something 
Nice. And I and I said, yeah. And so I quit, and I went and did that. And I was a production assistant on a show called Urban Tarzan. Oh, and and I'll never forget having to show up on my first day at 5 a.m. to a building I'd never been to before and then being handed keys to then drive a huge SUV with porta potties on a trailer behind it. And I've never driven a <laughs> I, I used I used to put tow uh, I used to put uh uh, tow bars and stuff on hit. I used to install hitches on cars in, in my early, right after high school for, for a while sure. when I was going to school. And, uh, but I never had to like tow anything or drive anything. And now I'm here. I am 5. AM. It's do or die. Yeah. And, um, yeah, man, I, I loved being on set. I loved talking with people, learning things and, and learning, um, all the different positions and jobs and job routes that I could go. And I started just peeing and bouncing from show to show to show, whether it was Urban Tarzan, Biggest Loser, um, just all kinds of stuff. And eventually I, and I kept getting a lot of work through this one particular company and meeting a lot of people. And in the middle of a show I was working on um, called The Lilas, um, which are, it's, it's an acronym for Love You Like a Sister. Yes. Uh, and it, it followed Bruno Mars' uh, four sisters. Oh, nice. Uh, trying to make a, a musical career for themselves in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And I was it was a very long run. And halfway through the run, uh, one of the associate producers got a new opportunity elsewhere. And the showrunner really liked me and was like, give it to give it to give it to Ellis. He's he's more than ready, you know. And so there I went immediately from being a production assistant to go, we need a location that's this, this, and this. We need extras. We need whatever. And I just, yeah. I ran with it. Yeah. And, and, and got it done. And, and so here began me now sort of on the producer track. And now, um, you know, all these years later, it's, I've, I've moved up from different producer positions and, um, that's what I do. That's my bread and butter. I, I found, I'm really good at talking to people and 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 making things happen that like seeing a creative person's vision and and facilitating and executing and um even if it's on content and things that I wouldn't necessarily watch sure uh it doesn't matter because I I enjoy it and you know I could still be putting tow hitches on a car or or True. what have you back, back in San Jose. And you know what? And that would be fine. But um, it all worked out. And eventually Alex and I reconnected after Second City a couple years ago. I ended up working on – I ended up not being happy uh, doing what I uh, – I was having a hard time finding work. I was in a weird transitional period, mm -hmm. and I was getting nervous about money. And a friend of mine called and said, hey – who works in on actual films I was like, Hey, you, uh, I know you don't production assist anymore, but John Favreau just signed on to direct oh. the new live action jungle book movie. And it's actually going to be filmed in Los Angeles, which to let you know, that's a really big deal for a movie to film in LA. Cause never happens. Movies don't film in LA anymore. It's, nope. it's not, it's not, it's not tax convenient for them mm. to, and, uh, it's very expensive too, even though, all of the equipment and all of the studios are here. Right. And uh, and so that was a really big deal. And everybody in town, I guess, was trying to get on it. And so I said, yeah, screw it. And I then get offered at the same time to be a, an associate producer on two other different like reality shows. It all just sort of when it rains, it pours. Here I am nervous. I'm not going to get anything. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm going to go interview for this production job production assistant gig and then on my way there i get a call not even having to interview to take this you know get an associate producer gig yeah. and uh i go interview with the woman and i said you know what i'm gonna kill myself if i don't if i don't go do this movie like right. i'm if i it, i'm always gonna wonder what the hell and uh so i turned down the reality job reality tv gigs and i said yes and i started in a small little garage with the storyboard department. What? Uh, on Jungle Book and watching them just create 
drawings and these beautiful animatics and all this stuff and getting John Bob, Johnny Bob's lunch and um, the producers and this and that. And once again, I, I'm, I like to talk. If you can tell how it's now been 58 minutes of me answering your first question. I love it. Um, and I apologize. This for the is rant. my show, man. Um, and again, here I am. I'm, I'm talking with producers and people and learning and figuring out and seeing the inner workings of it all. Because my favorite thing that I truly miss about Blu-rays and DVDs, mm-hmm. um, and especially with me now having mostly like my iTunes download thing, is I won't purchase a movie now if it doesn't have special features. Fair. Like, I'm like, I will purchase a movie just to watch the special features, even if it's a terrible movie, because I love behind the scenes. I love Same. how the sauce is made. I always have. Back to Star Wars, ever since I bought that tape from Star Wars to Jedi when I was a little kid at Suncoast Video, all about the making, mostly about the making of Return of the Jedi, like, I have just been hooked. Same. Absolutely hooked with the behind the scenes of it all. Um and here I am, like I've got I, I'm making my own BTS of the Jungle Book, and I did that for quite a while. Um, I was on that for a while, but then I got again. I was, I, 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 yes, but because I had gone from sort of managing production assistants and things and doing, you know, all these things on on a much smaller level for reality TV. There were things that I started to notice um, on the big productions where people would freak out over stuff that was not worth freaking out about. Sure. Um, And really, it was a micromanagement thing, and it was a uh, it it became soon became not it wasn't fun. Of course, it wasn't fun because everybody that I was sort of surrounded with for a minute for a while there were just. Like you, you had a lot of people that like didn't even like movies. You had a lot of people that um, were on like their fourth like marriage. You right. had people who just like they'd been doing this forever and they were tired and angry and grumpy and bitter. And I went, I I don't want to be that. Sure. Don't want to be that because the whole reason I came here to begin with was because of my love. For this industry and what it can do at it, you know, at its best. And this is not going to be good because I really like my relationship at home, though. And I don't want that. Like, it's not it's it's not worth losing my personal life for sure at the same time. Then ultimately just hate to sacrifice my personal life. Right. To then ultimately just be bitter and hate the thing that I sacrificed everything for. Right. It was like, that's not worth, that's not worth it at all. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And so at this, around this time, Alex and I had reconnected. And while I was on the Disney lot for jungle book, uh, we moved around a lot and of course. I went into the, the studio store and I saw these action figures in these, these like six inch star Wars action figures in this really cool. I really liked the packaging, with the orange in, like pills and Oh yeah. And I was like, this is awesome. And I bought the Han Solo figure and I was so stoked with it. And, you know, my whole life I've always been into toys. I've always had toys displayed in whatever room or office I'm in. Same. Um, I love action figures. I love, you know, and I loved it. And I had it displayed on my desk. And Alex and I were like on the phone. I was doing a run for something. And he happened to be at some store. And I said, hey, bud, do me a favor. Will you look for this, this boat, this action figure I'm trying to get? And it's this Boba Fett six inch Star Wars Black Series, kind of a black gray box with orange on it. Mm-hmm. Just check it out for me. And they didn't have that, but they had like a Bespin Luke and this and that. And and that just got Alex immediately. Bespin Luke is Alex's favorite thing. Well, that reinvigorated Alex's fandom in Star Wars. Nice. At the same time, I have loved listening. I'm a big I don't listen to him as much anymore, but I was a diehard Howard Stern show fan for since I was probably 12 years old until a few years ago. Sure. Um, every day was in my car. I, I, on even, and if I missed like an hour or two, I would play it back mm-hmm. later and 
and just die hard. And then I got into like Mark Marin and podcasts in general. Nice. And I just I love I love talk radio. Don't get me wrong, I love music, but I love when I'm driving and I have a job at the time where I was driving a lot. I loved listening to all these all this stuff. And uh, at the same time, I had been turned on to and I don't remember how, but I also have always I got on Twitter at a very early very early in Twitter's um, beginning. Sweet. And um, I started following a lot of these other things and like movie, like other reviewers and, and movie news and movie um, sites. I, I, I would follow them religiously on Twitter. And then a lot of them started doing podcasts, things like that. Well, I fell in love with Collider, Collider nice. Movie Talk to be exact. And, or maybe it was AMC Movie Talk back then. But I, I really like – I'm not a sports guy, but I like the idea that every morning for an hour I could have my sports center, but it all be catered to film and movie news. Sure. And I really got into that. And one day Alex came over to my house, um, and I was like folding laundry, and I, I had it playing on my Apple TV through YouTube. And Alex was like, what the hell is this? And – I was like, oh, it's this show I watch. Like, it's like Sports Center, blah, blah, blah. Well, he ended up getting into it. Nice. At the same time, our Star Wars fandom is is just percolating again. It's 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 in full mode. We got The Force Awakens is about to come out. We're just, we're eating it all up. We're following it. We're, Star Wars is, is, is back at the top of our lists right now. And we would talk every day and we would read articles and we would speculate and we would talk and we'd be like, you know what I would do? No, nah, that's weak. You know what they should do? Yeah. <laughs> you know, while also going out and going on these toy hunts. Um, because eventually I, I, I left Jungle Book and I went back to producing uh, in the reality docu whatever mm-hmm. area. And I, we, we, would, we would just... Every day when we were in the car, Alex and I constantly call each other. And we, whether it was 20 minutes or two-hour conversations, it was we were toy hunting for Black Series figures. We were trying to find them online. If we couldn't get them out there, we were battling old men scalpers at Toys R Us on a Thursday morning at 10 a.m. because they had just gotten their shipment. And it's like, a, you know, I tell this all the time on the show, but, you know, there's like two moms – with their strollers with kids in it, you yep. know, the two people that should get Toys R Us on Wednesday or Thursday at 10 a.m. And then... Excuse me. And then there's two sweaty nerds, an old man in, like, a monkey suit, like, that works under cars. Yeah. And then, like, really big, intimidating gentlemen. And you'd open the door, and it, it, it would be, might as well be Black Friday. These guys would be, like talking smack, getting each other's faces. There'd only be one. They'd be arguing. It was this whole thing. Oh, and we'd watch them, like, run. And it was Black Series figures. It was Transformers. And it was Hot Wheels and Funko. Ah. And then whatever the little, like, weird Nintendo thing is where you have to have, like, the action figure to play the character for the game. Oh, yeah, the um, Amiibos, I think. Something like that. Or, like, the and these, I mean, you're, you're watching these grown-ass men just... Like West Side Story, yeah. <laughs> and you're like, like, really? You know? And so, and then it would start every week. Every week, it would be the same thing. And Alex and I were like, dude, we should do a video where we follow these guys and we do this thing called Die Scalper Scum, and <laughs> we're gonna out the scalpers. We're gonna out the scalpers because this is bullshit that they're taking these toys. And Agreed. never mind what. Not, never mind like the fact that like you've got the employees as well that are. It targets the worst of it where, you know, they come out of the store on the stock day, the guys that have been doing stock all night, and you watch them put a case of Black Series figures in their trunk, and you're like, dude. I like, know. And then it's on eBay and all this stuff for a toy that's already 21 bucks or whatever, 19.99. Right. But it's now they're selling for 50 and 60 and upwards even higher. And you're like, dude, let's make videos. Let's, like, out these mother effers. Let's die scalper scum. And so we started. That was sort of the, the 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 original idea behind Black Series Rebels. Really. That and that and the name came from. So during the toy hunt, when it first started, I became really good friends with um, the editorial assistant on Jungle Book, and he saw my Black Series figures on my desk. I saw his, and so 
we start it, somehow we ended up in a text thread. Alex had never met Ian before. This is the editor, mm-hmm. and but yet we were on this text thread, and I named it um, Black Series Rebels because at that point the Rebels cartoon had also premiered. Nice. And so we would talk about Black Series, and then Alex and Ian would like start talking about Rebels, and my eyes would glaze over <laughs> because I have a hard like I have a hard time with the the animated shows. Now, for anyone listening, like Rebels is great. I I caught up. Everything's fine. <laughs> We're all good here. It just took a while. Anyhow, so that's the name. That's where the name came from for the show. And then we started just for over a year talking about we should do a show. We'll call it this. I was like, let's let's look at Collider. Let's look at what like Yak Face, the toy gut site guy. Oh yeah. Um, and I don't know if you know who Fly Guy is from oh, Australia. Yes. Uh, and like their videos and this and it was like, how can we sort of mesh all of this together with my producing and production skills as well as being in front of the camera and Alex is just crazy awesome improv skills and you know he's Alex Alex is you 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 probably don't realize it but you've seen Alex for the past 15 years in some of the biggest commercial campaigns on television that there have been really um Alex is a Alex is a big time commercial actor He's really great. He's been on TV shows. He's Alex kills it with, at whatever Alex does. Um, Alex is crazy creative. That just he knows marketing. He knows what people like. He knows he's quick witted. He knows humor. He's Alex is awesome and he's great to watch just on the like, show. Just like when you know he was this eighteen year old kid in this improv class where I was like, I need to sit next to this kid. I need to. You know, and so we always kept in contact. And sure. I mean, you should go. You, it's online. You should go look up shark bites. Um, shark bites. Yeah, it's a puppet shark. It's about what? a dude and, and about a dude and his puppet shark roommate and um, uh, crocodile. I'm already so um, into roommate. it. Um, he he raised the money. He wrote it. His but our our the guy that designs our pins and our set, Cody. Cody designed all of the puppets and made, made all of the puppets. Um, and Alex ended up ultimately selling this show as a cartoon to Disney. What? Um, there you go. That was while I was doing Jungle Book. Yeah. Um, yeah. Dude, Alex is crazy talented. So I've always known, like, I got to work with this kid. And sure. So, you know, we were like, Cody can design the set. We'll, you know, let's do news reviews, and I'll use my skills with booking people to like get guests. Nice. And we'll, it'll be like Wayne's World, though. It won't be so like serious. And we also aren't going to claim to know everything about Star Wars because we don't know everything about Star Wars. Sure. But like, we love Star Wars and we love celebrating it, and we're fans too. And how many other fans out there are like us? How many fans out there that like maybe didn't read the expanded universe? Sure. Maybe they don't know, you know, all the minute details about how the Millennium Falcon's hyperdrive works. Maybe they don't, you know, maybe they just love Star Wars and they just maybe know the movies. And let's try and figure out how we can inform that fan base while also having fun and catering to the super sweaty fan that maybe knows everything about it. Right. And make it an entertaining show for them. And how do we do that? And we really just thought about it and thought about it and cultivated it. And then it was like, okay, how do we want to film this? How do we that? And I'll never forget, we were having our production meeting, our first production meeting with Cody. And I I remember being like, you know, we just do a business card maybe. Like, oh, enamel pins are getting pretty big. You know what? We should do our logo on like an enamel pin and that'll be our business card we give people. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, well, what if? What if we had like a – what if it looked like an action figure, like the old Kenner, like like what if it was a play on that? What if it was sort of a satire and a joke, like we made these little tiny action figure pins that we – like, but it's also a business card. And what if we did like the first one was, was Luke as a farm boy? Like what if we called it farm boy? And what if instead of like – because I don't know if you remember Toys R Us had like the orange – the big orange stickers that they would put on oh, yes. their toys. I was like, let's have the big orange sticker that Toys R Us would have, but let's have it say Toyco or something, and let's put ages 35 and up instead of, you know, <laughs> that. And let's like it, and it is—it's a piece of art, and it's a parody, and it's satire, and all of that. Well, Alex, that also st- we had started the Twitter name for it a year before we ever did anything, That's and fine. we did the Instagram. And Alex is really good at social media; he's a genius at it. 
and he we started posting like the show's coming this and that black series rebels and then he posted a picture of our pin and what alex is really smart is is he went online and he figured he found all the like awesome popular like pin makers star wars influencers he was like oh look at this girl savannah look at this this awesome girl uh savannah Kiefer or jen marie or um oh there's this girl uh in san francisco that like is an influence seems like an influencer that um ended up being um amanda jean oh nice and at that point, like, we didn't know that she had worked for Lucasfilm. We didn't know she had anything. We didn't know she dated Matt Martin. We didn't even know who Matt Martin was, to be honest with you, right. at that time. And Alex just would send them messages with a picture of our pin and being like, hey, we see you like Star Wars. Like, would you um, – we'd love to send you our pin and see what you think about it. Well, dude, we sent that, We sent a ton of people the first pin – and people really liked it, and they really responded really well. And because of people like Savannah, Jen Marie, Amanda Jean, Lantern Pins, Punch It Chewy Press, BB Crate, like all these pin makers, all these 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 awesome um, sort of Star Wars fan. I don't even like calling them influencers or celebrities, but they're just these awesome Star Wars fans that spread the great gospel that, that is of Star Wars, and Absolutely. people like. And they shared our pin, and before you knew it, our Instagram was just like, bam! Yeah. And we were like, holy <laughs> crap, like, how did that happen? And um, so then we put the pin up for sale on our website, and it sold out. Like, we put 100 pins up, and it sold out in a little under, like, a month. Crazy. Which, which we were like, wow, that's crazy. Well, like, now we got some pin money, like... Maybe we don't have to shoot this in our garage. And so, you know, Alex has really good friends from high school that work um, in cutting video game trailers and stuff. And one of them works at EA, and one of the companies they work with are these young guys that own this company that cuts all the trailers for, like, EA and stuff like that. And they also co-produce Shark Bites with Alex. And they're like, dudes, we'll rent you an office at our facility in, in Chatsworth for like a good you know good thing it was like oh rad awesome so now we've got like a room we can actually go to and a studio and um and then my buddy Francisco Cisco um that I you know we, we were co-workers at a production company mm-hmm. like we never like we were cool and we were Facebook friends and we respected each other but like we were never like we never like called each other up or went and hung out really. Sure. Um, he he private messaged me and was like, "Hey man, I I see this this thing you're doing, like I see you're building like we started posting pictures of us building a set in my backyard, like pouring um, resin uh, molds off of a from a 3D printer of nice. the Death Star tiles, and we're like showing the progress of us building this set in our backyard. It's just Alex and I and Cody." And the pin, right? And Cisco's like, dude, I've been seeing this thing, what you're doing. Like, I'd really, if there's any way, like, I'd love to be a part of it. Or if I could even, I mean, if you, if you just, like, come watch you do it. Like, I'm, I'm really intrigued at this thing. Well, at that point, we were looking at cameras. And, you know, it was like, God, are we going to do the three-camera setup? How can we do this cost efficiently? Sure. And we were doing research, and uh, we found this camera called the Mevo camera. And oh, it's, nice. like... It's literally like the size of a small bouncy ball. Um, yeah, I've seen those. They're and, great. And it's meant for live streaming. But the cool thing about it is, is you can have um, a director using an iPad or an iPhone. You can do up to like 10 different angles. It, it caps. That's why we have sort of the weird fish eye on the wide shot of our show. Um it's also because we don't have much depth in our in our thing, but because it's got that wide angle, it can your director can from the iPad choose these angles um, and can live cut between between them like you would a live talk show. And wow! So we were like, well, and it was super cost affordable, and it was like, let's try this baby out, and it worked out perfectly. And I brought sis, we brought Cisco in to live direct it. And then eventually his his role's growing a little bit bigger, and he's also you know a producer on it. And you know we we started 
here we are. Let's do episode one. Let's 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 do Wayne's World for Star Wars. Let's you know, and and I really, I mean, I ripped off Collider basically and Ken Knapsack and their shows and like reading the headlines and reading the news off an iPad and reading these long quotes and those first the, those the, the first few months of the show it's pretty rough when you get to the new segment because i'm basically reading off an ipad web pages and it, you know <laughs> it's not and that bad <laughs> and eventually we lost like i got more comfortable and just sort of ditched the ipad we got more comfortable with being like you know what like let's be ourselves let's let's riff with each other like we would on in the car on the phones and let's 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 do that and less less about, you know, the quotes. Let's 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 report the news. Let's give reactions on it um, and our thoughts. But let's keep this conversational. Let's keep this not go. so not so stiff and, and, and so forth. And while doing that, it was the way we we're going to fund this show is as because we the first, like I said, the first pin sold out in like about a month. Next thing you know, the second pin we dropped sold out in two weeks. Oh. Then the next one we dropped sold out in a week. Mm. Then three days. Then a day. Then seven hours. And now we drop a pin and it's like three minutes. And yeah. it's just like it's, when it's you know so you're bizarre. Right. <laughs> it was. It was. I wish we could say this was a master plan, and it, it wasn't. It 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 absolutely wasn't. It it literally just sort of happened that way. Sure. Um. Again, I, 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 when we started the show, my only, um, my only rule was to live. Our show needs to live by this motto, which is um, repetition, repetition, repetition equals growth. Like, let's just keep repetition. We have to do this show every at this day on this time every week. Like, we have to. That's the if we're gonna do this. Because I'm done doing student films, I'm done doing short films, I'm done. We're professionals now. That's right. We're professionals in our craft. We're professionals in what we do to pay our bills. Hundred percent. I'm done making fun film, short film, whatever. I'm done meeting like once a week for like every other week for like a month, and then it just sort of pitters off. <laughs> like if I could take the time out of my life and my schedule and from my wife or from the other stuff that I want to do, we all need to take this seriously and we all need to um, we all need to be committed to every day, every Thursday, this is what we do. Mm-hmm. And if no, if it doesn't matter if people watch us, it doesn't matter if people buy our pins. What matters is the three of us want to utilize our day job skills on something we absolutely enjoy and love. For sure. And that, but at the same time, it's got to be fun. It's got to be fun. Right. And I think that by us sticking to that, it has really helped us in our this because we just had our first official one year anniversary. You did. And congrats. Thank you. I appreciate it. And dude, yeah, it's, thank you. It's, it's hard work. It is. Yeah. It's hard work. <laughs> and yeah, it's, it's like, God, dude, like I spent all week hunched over Alex and I both pinning pins. Cause we just did a convention in San Diego this last weekend at pin and patch con, right. uh, which was awesome. And I recommend anybody who's going to be in San Diego next year to go, if they can make it, it was good, good vibes all around. Um, and so, yeah, with the the with that motto, and us sticking to that, and these pins, just help the helping finance us being able to do this on an elevated way, on on a very you know reasonable budget. Sure. Um, it's just it keeps growing, and um, you know we thankfully we had a lot of a lot of our earlier guests were personal friends of ours that. Um, while may not be widely mainstream popular or known throughout Star Wars fandom, um, they are creatives that work in the entertainment industry in some form or fashion. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was all from day one. It was all about with our interview guests getting to know them as fans 
getting to know how they were introduced to Star Wars, getting to know how Star Wars has affected their creative life and process. For sure. Or or influenced it. Um, it's not about proving who's the bigger Star Wars fan. Right. And um, that led to them sharing their videos to then us being able to hustle and get other people and, you know, all, like I said, like I've ripped off a lot of what Collider has done. I've ripped off a lot of other things, just packaged it and, and so forth of differently. Yeah. Um, that's how you do it. Steal from and, the best, you know? Yeah. And we've had, I think we've had almost everyone from Collider minus, uh, Harloff and Ellis at this point. Nice. Um, but again, they, they come on and we, 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 we treat it professionally. You have to. They come in, you know, it's like they, they, we pay for their gas if they have to drive out there. We have Uber or Lyft to pick them up nine times out of ten if they need coffee or dinner or anything. It's like, guys, you're taking time out of your life to come all the way to Chatsworth to sit in a closet with us for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> like, we, right. ap- we really appreciate that you have taken the time to do that. Absolutely. And so... While we're these silly Wayne's World kind of guys, which we are in our real day-to-day life, again, we're professionals. And right. we need to act like professionals, and we need to take that part of it seriously. Um, otherwise, what the hell are we doing this for? For sure. I totally agree with and, you. And it's been a great – it's been the greatest creative uh, experience – I have ever had. I believe it. Um, it, it. It has been tremendous hard work, but at the same time, not work at all. Sure. Um, and where we go from here, I don't know. We don't have any long-term anything. All we know is, is that every Thursday night, we go up to Chatsworth. We sit around a, um, cat, like a, a dinner table. We eat Typically, we don't tell our wives, but typically we eat burgers and fries. Nice. And we have a great family meal and then for about an hour, and then we go in and we turn the lights on and we sit down and, Talk hey, Steve, Star Wars. <laughs> what's going on this week in Star Wars news? And that's how it goes, and we usually get home around midnight or 2 o'clock in the morning, and, you know, depending on how busy our editors are with their day jobs, mm-hmm. they... They put in all the Peter, uh, who does our weekly show, and Ron, who has been like our specials guy. He did the road trip thing, and nice. he put together he put together the Kelly Marie Tran video. Um, Beautiful. They they're they're the unsung heroes of Black Series Rebels. They're the guys that that really make it all happen for us. And uh, yeah, man, and that and our designer Cody, like Alex and I and Cisco. We just literally, like I said, we go have a burger and fries. We sit and we record. It's the family. It's the BSR family that really makes us look good and is the reason why the show is able to be what it is. And so um, we're just the the weirdos in front of the camera for the most part. And, yeah, we love it. We enjoy it. And, you know, yeah, I learned real quick with Star Wars fandom of, of – you know, um, I'm, so I'm not the big, I, I'm not the biggest fan of Raylo, and Same. I I made a <laughs> I made it and, and and I made a joke about it because oh my boy. introduction my first introduction to Raylo was a very, very Alex showed me a very very graphic, <laughs> uh, uh, gross uh, image fan art of these two characters engaged in things that for me. Personally, <laughs> I never even considered to be in Star Wars. I believe it. Um, and I made a joke, Uh-oh. and I referenced another very popular fan base that loves fan fiction. And boy, did I learn my lesson. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I did. And I think that the big thing here is is that, you know what, dudes? You're not hurting anybody. That's right. With, with that. You're not doing anything wrong. I was in complete wrong for making the joke and I apologize. Um, 
But do you? You know, you can. You, yeah, no, I do. I do. Because really what we have come, because we have learned so much about the Star Wars uh, fandom, especially in this last year. I believe it. You know, at the end of the day, you do fandom how you do fandom. And if you're a fan of that, or if you're a fan of this, you're a fan of that, that's awesome. You be a fan of that. Absolutely. Um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you what's right and wrong of, of that, but I will tell you you're wrong when you start spewing hate speech and um, you, you start being disrespectful agreed, uh, and violent. Mm. And in, you know, I, I was, I, I had a friend who, when we posted the, Hey guys, we're going to make a video for Kelly Marie Tran, spread some positivity um, if you want, like submit your video. I had a friend of mine who, who had commented on that post, just like, dude. And instead of taking it to Twitter, I called him smart and, um, had the conversation with him. And while he, you know, while I don't agree with his stance of his thoughts on Kelly Marie Tran or white males being attacked in fandom or uh-huh. any of that kind of stuff. Um, I just blatantly and simply told him, look, you cannot like a character. You cannot like a movie. You cannot like a person. Um, but in my, in my star Wars fandom, personally, there's no room for hate, um, or not necessarily hate, but there's no room for threatening and evil and disgusting, racist, misogynistic. Um, there's no room for any of that in my Star Wars. And so I'm not going to apologize for using what very, very small platform I may have to, to try and be louder than all of that. Absolutely. For 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 uh, for eight minutes. Agreed. Absolutely agree. It was and, a great video. I, I appreciate that. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna apologize for that. Um, and also like this, I'm not. Ma- and then I had another person come at me and go, "Dude, like, great idea. You guys are, you guys are, you guys are doing this to expand the brand, right? Like." like fantastic and it was like no oh boy <laughs> like like i like I, you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna say that's a very fair assumption to make uh but no and if you watch the video you'll notice there's no branding of black series rebels all over it i want to say alex and i are in it for literally five seconds yep and it's all about letting the fans spread positivity not just for kelly marie tran but for all the star wars fans out there right now that are frustrated and upset with a very, very vocal minority yeah. of people <laughs> who are just... It doesn't matter that it's Star Wars because these same people are going at all kinds of different things, even not just politics. And they're they're just behind a keyboard lighting up their digital tiki torches and they're just screaming and ranting just to scream and rant. Because for whatever reason, they don't feel they have a voice in their day-to-day human interaction life. For sure. And this is the one place where they can just say it and not have any ramifications. Yep. And and I totally get that. But we as Star Wars fans that are tired of that, we need to, we need to be louder than that. For sure. For we sure. need to be louder than that, and we need to spread the positivity, and we need to drown out that 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 noise. Um, and what we really need to start practicing is not responding. Exactly. That's like you want to have a, you want to have a civil debate. I'll have a civil debate with you. I will have a discourse with you that where we disagree. However, once it starts turning into insults and racism and all of that stuff, I. Uh, sorry, I tap out. Sure. I, I, I tap out. Smart. And I think that the smart choice that we all need to make as a fan base right now is to, once it gets there, we don't respond. Don't respond to the comment no matter how badly you want to. I need to be better about this. Alex needs to be better about this. But I think that's the first step. I agree. In drowning out that noise because that's what they want. Exactly. They want you. 
they want you to respond because what you have now just done is validated them and given them the attention that they so badly desire. Exactly. Exactly. I, I totally agree. And I also like I like how your story, you know, everything kind of comes full circle and everything feeds into itself. And it, the abhorrent situation with Kelly Marie Tran is absolutely terrible. But I do love that her quote is the one that we can all get behind to, like, get through this volatile, horrible thing going on. It's like, you know, it's not about fighting what you hate. It's about protecting what you love. And it's like people who are genuine fans of this thing and who actually love it and like like you said the perfect the perfect rebuttal is not giving them the platform that they're screaming if somebody's screaming and you're not listening that's way worse to them than screaming back at them you know and uh i agree i totally agree no i'm 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 with you it's been really interesting as a someone who's not really into technology or anything like that (laughs) um it's been it's been really interesting to me this last year of of watching and seeing and and seeing how this whole all everything plays out um uh, online and and like i said earlier i'm i'm guilty of um paying attention to stuff i shouldn't pay attention to or reacting offhandedly of course. to something that i shouldn't and i and i i need to be better about that as well and less cynical and you know that's that's sort of the plan right now for Black Series Rebels moving into our second year mm-hmm. is to be try and be less cynical, sure. um, and be more positive and and really celebrate this thing that we love while being able to also have a critical eye on it and and sure. be able to to ex, you know say when we don't necessarily agree or like something. Of course. Um, but ultimately the goal is to just let's 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 try and be positive because there's so much ranting and raving out there yeah <laughs> like like who do we need another show like that right for you real know, do i need another show of someone ranting and raving about how kathleen kennedy need, needs to like go God. like like I, I i i i'm gonna go have to re-up my blood pressure medication <laughs> if that's if, if that's the show we're gonna do that's right i love what alex said when he was talking about uh what was it it's like when we saw the force awakens people were experts on this and then when we saw Rogue One, people were experts on reshoots. It's it's so good because that that's exactly right. So well, awesome. we are. We're all. I mean, look, we're all. I sound like a broken record. We're all guilty of too being these armchair critics. And of course, you know, I know, I, like you know, I know, I kind of goofed on the the Rebels cartoon earlier in this chat. Um, but that's okay. You don't you have know? to. That's the best part. <laughs> I, I always said with people because. Uh, I I mean, obsessed is the closest word that comes to my love of Star Wars. And I, I've talked to a lot of people, and they're like, you know, I just don't really like Star Wars. I was like, that's totally fine. I like it enough for everyone. So it's like, you know, to have that sort of feeling, it's like not everyone has to agree on everything. Like, they're definitely more than movies. You know, Star Wars is something definitely special. So passion can definitely go one way or the other. But it's like at the end of the day, just enjoy something that you enjoy. And if you dislike it, that's fine, too. You know, it's just yeah, a cool, I cool little thing. I, it is, and it, and again, it, it it expands so much further than just Star Wars. It, it's it's absolutely. Look, I'm not I'm I'm not breaking any news here. It's we all know that we, regardless of your politics, regardless of whatever, I think we all can agree that um, our what's going on and what has been slowly getting us to this point um in our culture and in society oh, yes. is is not good you're, you're right about that <laughs> it's not good and i don't know what the answer is i don't I, I i lately have been joking constantly that you know i'm cool if like you know that movie the purge and that whole thing like yeah i'm totally cool if for 30 days once a year <laughs> the internet the internet is turned off we got to go stand in line at DMV. We got to go to the store to get our groceries now. We got to go like you. And, and I and I think like it, I don't know that'll never happen, I know. Mm-hmm. But um can't hurt. I don't know. I don't know because we we have lost the ability to to communicate and talk to each other. Agreed. Um y- using a tool invented to c- create further communication. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's it's 
I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know what the answer is. Um, the Star Wars fandom right now is a a small little petri dish of we're able to sort of examine of the bigger issue of what's going on in our entire world right now. For sure, for sure. We just got to learn to. I remember Mark Hamill a lot of years ago saying that we need to remember how to disagree agreeably. And I think everyone in all aspects could definitely benefit from that sort of thought. And uh, while you said nobody's perfect, it's definitely a, a, a learning curve, you know, but it starts with effort. You know, just mm-hmm. try just try a little bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you know. I, I It's funny, before we got on, I just I had heard about it, but I finally just saw Chris Pratt's... Um, his acceptance speech? His little acceptance speech. Beautiful. At, it's like, dude, like, I'm not a religious man. I don't judge people who... Uh, have like religious faith like you that it's like with me with fandom and everything i'm like whatever gets you through the day man like Absolutely. you do you do you like i don't care um but i watch that thing and i go this motherfucker i know like, right can he just stop being so perfect i know <laughs> like, I, like 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 never mind like whatever happened in his personal life with with his wife and shit. like whatever it's not my business but like like dude Agreed. stop like could you stop <laughs> being so good i love it I love I love that there's people like that and that there's the examples. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's that's all it takes. Just a little bit of effort. You know, just try. Yeah. You're gonna fail. Just, well just try. Just try. You can fail. You're not perfect. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean you can't keep trying. And, and most of all, earn everything. Yes. For sure. God. It's you so know? good. So life's so weird, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it's you know, it, it it's yeah. Life is life is weird. It's beautiful. It's fucked up. It's it's all kinds of things. Um, it is. Just gotta focus. Put, you know, put the good out. That's that's the th- that's that's the the motto. You know, just something. Just put good. There's gonna be bad. There's always bad. Put the good out, mm-hmm. and that's something that you guys are doing at Black Series Rebels very very well. I absolutely I love your show. That. Like it's it's so I good, it. dude. You you're killing it. Absolutely killing it. And the fact that you've only been around for a year is just a testament to how much you guys were needed. Because, like you said, you went from like selling out in a month to selling out in minutes in the span of a year. That doesn't happen anywhere else, you know? But that, that shows the quality you guys are putting forth. And uh, you're just killing it, man. You're killing it. And oh, I'm, man, I, I, I really do appreciate that. I'm curious. How did you first... How were you first introduction, introduced to BSR? Let's see. When... It had to have been through the pins... Okay, because I, I I don't I don't ask for my own vanity. I ask because I'm like Alex Alex Cisco and I are genuinely just like like when we did our live show in February, mm-hmm. we had pre sold out tickets. We knew because we you know we we knew the numbers, but we still were like when Alex and I before we went on stage, it was this weird thing where that was standing room only. Like, we had told a bunch of friends and family to come to be seat fillers, basically. Sure. And we didn't have, for the first time, performers, you know, were used to performing for, like, four people. Right. And usually they're our family and friends. <laughs> and Alex and I, all, we just looked at each other and we were like, dude, what is, like, why are these people here? And, like, I, like we just were in shock that, like, we, we didn't expect people to be there. So when I asked you, like, how did you hear about us, it just... It, we still are genuinely shocked that anybody watches us, <laughs> anybody spends their hard-earned dollars on these silly, stupid pieces of enamel. <laughs> like, we're so just like, we're like, wait, what? Like we, it's, it's not real. Because, again, it's just us going to our clubhouse once a week, having burgers. Sure. Talking about Star Wars. It's not so real it's, to it's you guys because you're behind the ca- you're behind the curtain, you know. But for it, definitely, like you said, Alex is a genius at promotion and stuff like that. That is a huge thing nowadays, specifically in the way like the world works and the way that e internet works. And like, it's so genius the pins because, like you said, that is something a lot of people are into. But even more so, it's a way to like show support for something that one is really cool by itself. But the double meaning of like, oh, this is a Star Wars pin, which on its own is great, but it also supports the show that we all enjoy. So it's like a double whammy of like, I like these two things, and this is my badge that I'm a part of this particular community. You know, both being Star Wars and Black Series Rebels. 
and you that's guys cool. just, I, I have not thought about that before. You know, because that's that's the thing. Like, you go to a concert, you get a shirt to say that you've been there, and it's like, oh, look at the shirt. This is a band that I like and an event that I went to. You guys are basically doing that. You know. Yeah, and that was that was the idea I think from the start in terms of like because Alex grew up doing punk rock bands. I grew up around the scene, right. and it was it was it's it's literally making our band it, like we're in a band we're just not playing instruments is, is also sort of how we we look at the show that's right um and you like things that a lot of people like as well and like there's nothing better than talking star wars with best friend and you guys are doing it on a platform that gets it out to other people as well and the best thing and I, i'm glad you said it earlier is you're very much yourselves and i found that that is the most important thing because there are hundreds of star wars podcasts there's one with alex and steve you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so like that's well, that's a I huge that. huge thing. And like I I started this show to get to know people. Like my show is not a Star Wars podcast. It is mm-hmm. a common thread because it's something I'm very passionate about, and that's typically how I find out about the people I want to get to know. But mm-hmm. it's very much about people, and I think individualism is amazing. I think our differences are what make us special. Everyone has a different story, and the fact that you guys made it your own. It's not just a Star Wars show. You know what I mean? Like, you're talking about Star Wars, but it's Star Wars with you guys. And that's the thing that catches people. Genuine human interaction. You know, the connection via the screen where it's not just... You guys aren't just portraying news. You're talking about news that can be found literally everywhere else. But you're talking about it in the way that you talk about it. And then you give your reactions to it. It's a relationship. You know what I mean? And uh, No, absolutely. I think, I think that's why you guys have been doing so well in such a short amount of time and i think it's absolutely warranted and uh i love it i'm i'm so glad you guys did this because it's such a and with the pins as well it's just an added layer to you guys you know i love it absolutely love oh, it. oh thanks man i appreciate it curious are you gonna be uh are you gonna be in san diego in july for comic con i wish i just moved so i'm like oh god oh. but the reason i was asking about san diego is because we this I saw is so the announcement. Last. This is, this I saw is so it. last. We are we we've got barrels in our mouths Dude, right now. Yes. We uh we are very stressed out because <laughs> um the fine gentleman over at a shop called Quest um went ahead and booked us a panel, official panel with San Diego Comic Con on Thursday, Dude. September nineteenth, uh at three o'clock. Oh my god. Uh, we literally just got this like Monday. Dude, that's what I mean. <laughs> um, and so we've got to hustle to put together a fun. We're gonna do. Um, we decide it's not gonna be a normal panel. We're gonna do uh, basically what we did at a shop called Quest, our live, the live version of our show. Sweet. Um, and we're in the process now of booking some cool special guests. So hopefully, um, we get them locked in and we can announce those soon. Um, but for any of your listeners, if they're going to be in San Diego in um, July and on July 19th, to be exact, um, come get sweaty with us. Yeah. Um, and I'll let you know that we are – we may – we're still ironing out the details, but we – it's looking like there's a good possibility we might be doing something up in or- in Portland in September for Rose City Comic Con. So Ooh, nice. Um, we're, we don't know what. We're just sort of uh, kind of ironing out all the details. But if everything goes smooth, uh, you can expect to get sweaty with us in Portland in September. Killing it. Killing it. See, this is the kind so. of stuff I'm talking about. Power moves, Steve. Power moves. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely I love it when good people are doing good things. So, Thanks, uh, brother. I, I, I think that's a, that's a great way to, to cap this off. But I, I, ha- I cannot have a member of the Black Series Rebels on without a formal request <laughs> To make a Qui Gon pin one day, I had to. Oh, I had to. I'm sorry. I had to. Buddy, buddy, you will. You will. Don't you worry. I'm a We've cry. got. We got lots of pins to make. We got lots of months to go. Yes. Um. Don't you worry. We will. We will have a. A. That you don't worry. Your future's looking bright. Oh, in the, I can't in the, wait. In the, down, down the road, we got to get through a couple pins. Of course, first, of course. But, uh, you, gotta, you gotta lead yeah. up to him, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, but I, I think you're gonna be pleasantly surprised with uh, at least one of the pins that we'll be dropping this month. Ooh, 
can't do this to me, Steve. So yeah, before I, before I forget, I, I have to yeah. ask, where can people find you online? So people can find uh, Black Series Rebels at Blook, B-L-K, <laughs> Series Rebels on Twitter and Instagram. Again, that's Blook, Series Rebels, B-L-K, Series Rebels on Instagram and Twitter. Um, you can find me at Rex Manning, that's M-A-N-N-I-N-G on Twitter and Instagram. Um, probably should have made a separate one with my actual <laughs> name when we started this show uh, because a lot of people can't figure out if my name's Steve or Rex. Rex. Um, I just love the movie Empire Records, and I love the name Rex Manning, and I started up on Twitter and Instagram very early on, and those were the names I picked. Anyhow, never thought I'd be, you know... Rex. The host and producer <laughs> of a of a show, but you know, I do think it's funny because Rex is a um, is a name people love and cherish in the Star Wars universe. True. Um, so it it can be mixed there. I'm sure there's a lot of people who don't know what Empire Records are, and they're like, "What? Who's Rex <laughs> Manning in Star Wars? Like, what is?" Right. Anyhow, my, you can find me at Rex Manning. You can also find my co-host partner, uh, creative genius extraordinaire, Mr. Alex Backus at Alex Backus on Twitter and Instagram. Yeah. That's how you do it. This was fantastic, so, yeah, dude. Sucks. Hey man, thank you so much. I this is a very long episode, so I've had uh, longer. I've had way longer. <laughs> we had a guy named Details. To this day I, one I, of the best I, episodes. I was, three hours. I was listening to it. Yeah, I saw that. Three. Amazing. But anyway, that's this was super was fun. Good stuff, bud. Thank you so much for coming on. This was fantastic. Thank you, sir. And uh, anytime you want to come back, just let me know. Absolutely, and let us know when you're going to be in Los Angeles so we can uh, get sweaty. Oh, dude, your ratings are going to go through the floor. But if you're yes. willing to take the risk, so am I. <laughs> Let's do it, buddy. <laughs> Absolutely. And... Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you enjoyed it, stop by iTunes, give it a five-star rating. It really does help push the show to the front of the algorithm so that more people can find it. Uh, if you'd like to follow me, I'm on Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff as Jedi Brian. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. So until next time, be well. <laughs>